Hi everyone, uh, this is a little project that I've been working on and I actually posted a video of this uh, on YouTube the other day but I figured I would uh, give you some more details about it and let you see it in action. Um, I Personally, I like electric lawnmowers. I've had several of them, which is actually part of the problem. Uh, in the past five years, I'd say I've gone through about three different lawnmowers and the, really they're just, the ones you get at Home Depot or wherever you know are just really not designed to hold up either they're just really lightweight and use cheap components or a lot of plastic stuff or you know uh poor design so they I usually, usually only get about two to three seasons out of them max and that's just you I mean you know not acceptable performance for a lawnmower i didn't think um so i started working on this project and i thought you know hey you know lawnmowers aren't that complicated i think i could probably do this much you know maybe better myself so, uh, this is my electric lawnmower. Um, what I did is basically we just got a, uh, you know, blade mount underneath with a couple of, uh, uh, not pillow blocks, but flange bearings um, stacked right on top of one another that uh, hold the blade underneath. It is self-propelled. You really couldn't push this thing if it wasn't. It's, it's it, believe it or not, quite heavy, uh, but it's self-propelled. So what i did to start start with is i actually had somebody uh, took measurements of the engine mount uh, and had somebody custom cut a um, base plate for me this is quarter inch steel went to the local steel shop and had them uh, mill it out for me had all the holes uh, you know cut it cut out of it and everything on a plasma cutter uh, and that saved me a lot of uh, headache it was not cheap uh, you know but it, but probably by far the easiest most efficient way to do that um, then I took and also ordered a shaft that um, figured out how much, what size shaft I would need. It was a 7 8 inch shaft and I actually had it bored uh, or tapped on the other end uh, with the same bolt size that the mower originally used in the engine shaft. Um, so it's pretty much, you know, on the bottom side it looks like, like it did when it came from the factory. Um, then I went ahead and built this frame up to mount the motor on, used a 2 horsepower 120 volt, 240 volt induction motor. Um, the reason for that being that um, the uh, usually these come with a brushed DC motor. It's got a rectifier built in so you can plug it into the wall outlet. Um, but uh, they tend to be a little bit low on power, uh, especially for somebody who you know doesn't have time to cut their lawn every week necessarily. Uh, I'm a busy guy. I got other stuff to do. Uh, the most of them just didn't have enough power to keep up with me uh, so I went ahead and selected a two horse uh, marathon motor to put on here uh, and just did a belt drive it was about the easiest easiest way to do that um, it's got a little bit of reduction it's a 3450 rpm motor um, the blade spins roughly around 3000 rpms which is pretty typical for a lawnmower anyway uh, most of them are governed to around that speed uh, to keep you know, in compliance with federal blade uh, blade speed law, foot, feet per second uh, blade speed laws. Um, but uh, anyway, so I just you know made a mount to bolt that on there. It's uh, it's spring loaded. It's got you know the, the tension on the belt, um, which is uh, something I kind of came up with after the fact. Um, like I said, self propelled, so it's got another V belt down underneath. Um, what I also did was I took and you know, see it goes up to the, the power cord coming from the motor. I actually pulled this off a uh, uh, the previous uh, corded mower that I had. Uh, you know, it's a safety switch, turn it on and off, and uh, it supports up to 20 amps. So you know that should hopefully uh, cover the current going to the motor. A um, couple of things I've already discovered in using it uh, my springs actually are not tight enough uh, so it doesn't so although it you know at standstill it provides adequate tension on the belt but when you get it loaded down it'll start slipping uh, pretty bad um, and of course it so it doesn't you know doesn't kill doesn't blow circuit breaker or anything at this point uh, just because of the amount of slippage that it has um, but so I'm working I need to correct that see if we can get some more tension up here maybe um, the uh, um, also it is very heavy uh, that electric motor and the plate you know adds a lot of weight to it it's probably a good 
easily a good 10 pounds heavier than it would be with a gas engine on here. Um, so if, if you know if this thing wasn't self-propelled, it wouldn't be worthwhile. Just because, you, well, unless you want to lose a lot of weight, because I mean it, it it would take quite a bit to it takes quite a bit of energy to maneuver it, even with self-propelled. Um, but overall, I mean, I've tested a little bit here, and it seems to work just fine. Um, other than a few little uh, issues that I need to work out um, in terms of uh, getting the belt tension correct, and uh, you know, I went to Home Depot and bought a universal mulch blade that I put on it because I like to mulch my leaves in the in the yard, and that seems to work all right. Um, I guess that's that's all I can really tell you about it. I'll just go ahead and we'll we'll power it up and I'll show it to you in action. So it's it's pretty easy to do if we want to power it on. We just uh, basically grab hold of the lever and, and off you go. So like that. You can see where the uh, belt starts to slip a little bit when you put it under load, but um, I've got an idea to fix that already, so we'll, we'll try it and see if it works any better. Thanks for watching.